give you a little bit of a road map. We got six songs and three readings. And the theme will be the name of Jesus. Part of my favorite thing at this time of the year is remembering the whole reason that we have liturgical calendar is to be reminded of the arrival of Jesus and that Jesus will come back again. So every time you hear Advent candles or hear Advent season, think about arrival, preparing for someone. People waited a long time for Jesus to show up, and now that Jesus has come once, we're like, come on, Jesus, giddy up, come back and make all things right. Kick the snot out of sin, redeem everything, right? And part of what we wanted to do tonight in your last Kaleo of the semester and as you get ready to jump into finals and everything else is we want you to call out Jesus into every area of your life. When I was a little kid, and I still do this now, you know those nights when you have a bad dream or you feel the heaviness of evil? There will be moments at night when I'm laying in my bed and I wake up kind of like unsettled and Jesus, I just speak Jesus into the dark. Say the name of Jesus out loud over finals. Say, Jesus, when you keep falling asleep on your computer and you have a million Zs in a row because you fell asleep on the Z key, right? Last week, if you were here, we looked at Matthew chapter 1, the genealogy of Christ. And I said to you, in there, no one is disqualified because Jesus can save and redeem stories, every story. And in verse 16, it simply says this, Jesus who is called Messiah. Will you just say or whisper really quietly a couple different times out loud, Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, we need you to break into our lives again. Thank you for showing up, arriving and saving, conquering sin. We want you to come back that second time, make all things right, be done with all the brokenness. But until that day, we will expect and wait and call your name out into the darkness. Jesus, be the light that we need. We worship you. You are our focus tonight. May you clearly be worshiped in all that we do. Kaleo community, keep worshiping and call Jesus into the darkness. What we want to do is continue to worship through scripture and to have a chance to exhale for a little bit and remember what it was like to hear that someone was arriving. And so for the next two songs and the next two readings, we'd love to invite you to sit and take a deep breath and the band will invite you back up as uh, they sing the next two songs and you hear another reading. But we asked Sierra if she would just read out of Luke chapter 2 to remember what it was like to hear that Emmanuel, God with us, was going to change everything. Thanks for reading scripture. Luke 2, 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord had told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they, set, when they had seen him, they spread and word concerning what had been told them about his child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. 
the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The word of the Lord. In scripture, there's so many different names that refer to Jesus. Lamb of God, Son of God, Bright Morning Star, the Alpha Omega. In a real simple book, God Came Near, Max Lucado has musings about the everyday availability of Jesus. And we asked if Jake would read um, a short little chapter called, Just Call Me Jesus. Think about these words. There are many names in the Bible to describe our God, but none that capture his humanity quite like the name Jesus. Jesus could have been a Joe. If Jesus came today, his name might have been John or Bob or Jim. Were he here today, it is doubtful he would distance himself with a lofty name like Reverend Holiness Angelic Divinity the Third. No, when God chose his name, when God chose the name his son would carry, he chose a human name. He chose a name so typical that it would appear two or three times on any given class roll. The word became flesh, John said, in other words. He was touchable, approachable, and reachable. And what's more, he was ordinary. If he were here today, you probably wouldn't notice him as he walked through a shopping mall. He wouldn't turn heads by the clothes he wore or the jewelry he flashed. Just call me Jesus, you can almost hear him say. He was the kind of fellow you'd invite to watch the Rams-Giants game at your house. He'd wrestle on the floor with your kids, doze on your couch, and cook steaks on your grill. He'd laugh at your jokes and tell a few of his own. And when you spoke, he'd listen to you as if he had all the time in eternity. And one thing for sure, you would enjoy him. It is worth noting that those who knew him best remembered him as Jesus. The titles Jesus Christ and Lord Jesus are seen only six times. Those who walked with him remembered him not with a title or designation, but with a name, Jesus. Think about the implications. When God chose to reveal himself to mankind, what medium did he use? A book? No, that was secondary. A church? No, that was consequential. A moral code? No. To limit, God's, to limit God's revelation to a cold list of do's and don'ts is as tragic as looking at a Colorado road map and saying that you've seen the Rockies. When God chose to reveal himself, he did so, surprise of surprises, through a human body. The tongue that called forth the dead was a human one. The hand that touched the leper had dirt under its nails. The feet upon which the women were wept were calloused and dirty. And his tears, oh don't miss the tears, they came from a heart as broken as yours or mine ever has been. For we, do not, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. So people came to him. My, how they came to him. They came at night. They touched him as he walked down the street. They followed him around the sea. They invited him into their homes and placed their children at his feet. Why? Because he refused to be a statute in a cathedral or a priest in an elevated pulpit. He chose instead to be Jesus. There is no hint of one person who was afraid to draw near him. There were those who mocked him. There were those who were envious of him. There were those who misunderstood him. There were those who revered him. But there was not one person who considered him too holy, too divine, or too celestial to touch. There was not one person who was reluctant to approach him for fear of being rejected. So as you can keep in that same spirit and attitude, uh, you can stay standing or seated. Uh, but I want you to listen to the, this reflection from Brennan Manning, and it's kind of been adapted for this setting. So you can close your eyes or you can read along on the screen. Uh, so listen to this, and it'll be kind of pausing in between. So who is this Jesus of Nazareth? This Nazarene carpenter in whose name vast communities have developed, worldwide churches organized, reforms and renewals launched. 
historians, theologians, emperors, film directors, and all manner of believers and doubters have rendered their opinions. But others cannot answer on our behalf. You must answer and respond for yourself. So must I. Jesus puts the question upon his disciples and us, but what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. And so to us tonight, we ask, describe the Christ that you have personally known on your own grounds. Describe him as you would to a friend over coffee. Describe not who or what you have heard about him, but only the Christ you have encountered. And so as we continue in worship and into this next song, I invite you, reflect honestly on what your own answer reveals to you. Who is this Jesus of Nazareth? Ashton Brody, we need to pray specific tonight. As we were singing, I felt like this needed to be prayed over us. Tonight, if you feel the weight of sin and brokenness, I just want to say Jesus, the Messiah, and the power of the Holy Spirit can break that if you want that and ask for it. Those of you who feel the heaviness of Christmas break, and, and sometimes, not always, but sometimes it's real and big, the dysfunctional places that we have to go home to need Jesus, the Messiah, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you right now are hearing lies in your head that you cannot do this week and next. Those doubting only from the devil, sinful, that's just going to want to tear you down, that you can't finish a paper, that you're not smart enough, that you can't get that grade you need to come back, that that money won't be provided. Jesus, the Messiah, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, you should not leave here. I shouldn't leave here. We shouldn't leave here without hope that Jesus, the Messiah, and the power of the Holy Spirit can work in it everything and anything. And this is what I pray over this room. May the power of Jesus the Messiah and nothing else save us from all the things we've said and done, the things that want to have power over us, the things that we have given into for way too long. God, would people go through the rest of this week and finals next week free, maybe for the first time, in the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. And God, I pray for broken relationships of any kind with roommates, with friends, with those that we attend church, those back home, dysfunction, things that we've created or others have created. Jesus, the Messiah, and the power of the Holy Spirit, free and break those things to redemptive moments. And God, I really believe this crowd needs to tell the devil to shut up and go away. This crowd is not dumb. This crowd does not have enough to finish strong. God, you have created them to be your workmanship, and that even means finishing well here at the end of the year. So Jesus, the Messiah, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, would you give them the strength that only comes from an almighty God? God, would every student in here leave with hope, I pray. And if they need to stay and worship more, ask a friend to pray over them. Help them not hesitate. And God, if they need to just fall on their knees tonight and beg you for the strength, forgiveness, or hope that only you can bring, would they do that? Be with those that need to slip out and be with those that need to stay. May you be glorified as we continue to worship and sing. In Jesus' name and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray together. Amen. Continue to live out that prayer and be in this. God, I just pray for any of us in here who are struggling with uh, anxiety, depression, insecurities, God, um, fear, doubt. God, just show yourself in all of that. Because you are so much greater, God. You are.
are so much greater than any lie that we have ever heard. You're just so good, God. Just be with us within uh, these next few days and during finals week, God. Because um, we need you. And we cannot do this um, on our own strength at all. Um, so we just thank you for, for what you're going to do. We love you so much, Lord. We are nothing without you. Every breath is yours, God. Every step we take is yours, God. Every word we say is yours. Everything we do is yours, God. Thank you for sending your son to die for all of our sins. Any horrible thing that we could ever imagine, you sent your son to die for, God, and we are so overwhelmed and grateful and thankful. We love you so much, Lord. Just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.